Good morning, church. Hope everyone is doing well and hope you've had a good week. We'll be getting to the pastor's message here just in a moment and also Jonathan's announcements. But just wanted to uh, make mention of a couple things to you. Uh, Brenda and Adrian and April are working on getting the school backpacks together. So uh, if you do have uh, information you want to send in, uh, please send it on to them. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit different this year. We're going to be doing generic lists basically for the uh, elementary and for the high school. <clears throat> and that's because of the difficulty of getting some of the products. So we will not be uh, supplying the wipes and some of the um, sanitary products because of the difficulty getting that, getting those. And then also uh, the pastor wanted everybody to know uh, that Brother Dave Galdner there in Michigan is doing well uh, in their church. <clears throat> They've got about 25 souls there and uh, just wants to continue praying for them. I'm thinking they're uh, wanting Brother Dave possibly to lead the church. So uh, he wants everybody to pray for, uh, pray for him. And, and we just want him to know that we as a church are praying for him and just lift him up in the saints uh, in prayer. Hope everyone has a, um, a good week uh, and hope you enjoy the message. It's a great message and just get ready to worship and enjoy the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. We'd like to welcome everyone back for another online service. Hope everyone's doing good and staying safe out there. I uh, just need to go over our announcements really quick. Uh, remember that if you have any prayer requests or names you would like to add to the prayer list, please send those to cljcrequests at gmail.com. Uh, also, something we're trying to emphasize now, um, if you have any praise reports, please send those to that email address as well because in times like these, everyone needs a little bit of good news. Uh, since we're still unable to pass around the fasting chart, please continue with your normal days that you have been fasting. Uh, remember all of our videos that drop throughout the week. You have Sundays at 8 a.m. It's available on YouTube and 10 a.m. It's available on Facebook. Uh, Brother Thomas's series on the Book of Acts Church is available every Wednesday at 5 o'clock and our Sunday school lessons are available every Friday at 5 o'clock as well. I just want to continue to let everyone know that we're still praying over everything that we normally do in a church service here, as well as praying over the names in the box. Uh, also, the pastor is continuing to read out and pray over all the names on our prayer list on a daily basis. Lastly, we still want to thank everyone that helps make this possible, uh, those to get the lessons together, the messages together, the choir, all the people who are down here recording, editing, um, thank the pastor for trusting us and allowing us to do this. And most of all, we want to thank God for making all this possible. So if you guys need anything, please reach out to us, call us, text us, email, Facebook, you know, whatever you need, we'll try our best to help you out. We love you all and hope to see you soon. A long time ago, Lazarus died, all hope seemed gone as his sisters cried. But Jesus walked to where he lay, he called his name, and he came out of the grave. Oh, death, oh, death, where is thy sting, oh, grave, where is thy victory? You thought you had a hold on me, but you
Praise the Lord, church. Good morning, too. I hope you're all still saved and safe. And I have my prayers. And give God a big hand. Praise the Lord for our blessings, all the mercy and grace. Praise the Lord. We honor you, God. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you, God, for your mercy and grace, God. We honor you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I praise you, God. We appreciate you, Lord. We thank you, God, for all your blessings, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I hope you all out there are praising him this morning. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Because we got a God that should be praised. Praise the Lord. All of his benefits. You know, I'm just thinking, I said, I miss you all, and people are asking me a lot what I think's going on. Well, I know one thing. These people are saying it's a hoax. They're not right because people are dying and suffering Amen. over it. But I tell people, I say, God still rules over the affairs of men. Amen. And the secret things that belong to the Lord, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children. Amen. And I said, He has revealed to us how to be saved, right. delivered, Amen. healed, and, he, and that's all He has to do for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if we got those three things, Amen. The rest of it, praise the Lord, it'll all work out in time. And God will show us these things. And Jesus has revealed to us what we need to do to be saved and what we need to escape all the things that's going on in the world. And that's we've got to make it to heaven. For the rest, I don't know, but I'm like Habakkuk. I've said, I've told, said this many times. I'm just going to sit back and wait on him. But uh, I was telling... Thomas and Dwayne, I said a while ago I was a praying and I just asked the Lord, I wasn't going to say nothing about it, but I was going to ask the Lord just to give me a glimmer of what he thinks is going to happen, what was happening, Amen. praying. And I said 99% of my messages come from the Bible that I just stick my hand and open a page and put my hand on the scripture and get it from that. And I said, and I had my finger on the scripture, I said, now remember the parable of the fig tree. How when the li- branches are tender, put it forth its leaves. You know it's summertime. Amen. Summer's now. And he said, in like manner, when you see all these signs become to pass, it's now, even now, at your door. Amen. So we're getting, we're, I, I do believe we're looking at the end time. If people ain't getting ready out there now, I don't know, amen, what it's going to take to get them to do it. Because that, I'm still praying for Jackson, Maverly, all the others. In fact, I pray for all of you and all your children. And I miss all of you. I've talked to a bunch of you, but I still miss you. And I wish we'd just be back together. But that's up to the Lord. That'll be the Lord's time when he wants it to. I'm not being silent in this thing. I'm praying a whole lot because I want to know the will of God. I want to know and stand with the laws of God and the laws of man and doing what God would have us to do. I want to be obedient to the word and everything. I know we always recognize everyone who's doing things here to keep this online service going, Brother Dwayne and Brother Thomas and Brother J.B. and Brother uh, Johnny Lee and but I think y'all miss Eden and Brandon sometimes, and they got to put up with Johnny Lee sometimes at 1 a.m. in the morning. And so I just give God a big hand for them. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I love y'all. I appreciate Brandon, you, and Eden for doing that. But the scriptures in Hebrews 6 and 10 said, For God is not unrighteous to forget your works and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name in that you minister to the saints. And so minister means a lot of things, but it means just if you just host them. <laughs> if you just host somebody, that you're ministering unto the saints. So we thank God for you, Brandon and Eden, for doing what you do. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, as we come before thee today, God, we thank you, God, for thy mercy and grace, God. We thank you for all the blessings, God, you bestowed upon us. We thank you, God, that we don't have to get a priest to go in 
on the veil, behind the veil, God. We thank God that you're just right open. Anywhere we're at, God, we can look down, hallelujah, just speak up, lift our hands and praise you, God, and ask you questions. We can talk to you, Lord, anytime we want to, God. We thank you, God, we don't have to carry around an ark or a box, God, that you're contained in the box, God, but you're everywhere, wherever we go, God, you're there, God. You're in the hospital, Lord, with all these COVID patients. God, you're everywhere, God, those that's in trouble, trials, going married, is bad, whatever's going on in their lives, God. You're there, God. If they just open their eyes, Lord, and look, they could see the beauty of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Yay. And amen. Give God a big hand for it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you, God. I want to read from Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15 through 26. The scripture says, For thus saith the Lord, God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest you shall be saved in quietness, and in confidence shall be your strength, and you would not. But you said, No, for we will flee upon horses. Therefore shall you flee, and we will ride upon the swift. Therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. One thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one, and the rebuke of five shall you flee till you be left as a beacon upon the top of a mountain, and as an ensign on a hill. And therefore will the Lord wait, that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord, he is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. For the people shall dwell in Zion and Jerusalem, Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee. And at thy voice of thy cry, when he shall hear, he will answer thee. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the waters of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk you in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left, you shall defile also the covering of thy graven images of silver and ornaments of the molten silvers. Images of gold, thou shalt cast them away as a minister's cloth. Thou shalt say unto it, Get thee hence. Then shall he give thee rain of the seed, that thou shalt sow the ground withal, and bread of thy increase of the earth. It shall be fat and plenteous, and that day shall they cattle feed in large pastures. The oxen likewise also the young mules, that ears, ground shall eat. Clean proven, which have been winded with the shovel and with the fan. And there shall be upon every high mountain and upon every high hill rivers of streams and waters in the day of the great slaughter, more when the towers fall. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days. In that day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their wounds. And I'd like to take the title of my text from verse 18. And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is God of judgment. Blessed are they that wait for him. Amen. And I want to title my message, the Lord waits for them that waits for Him. The Lord waits for them that waits for Him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. Just wait upon the Lord, and He will renew your strength. Praise God. Just wait. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. David said, wait upon the Lord, and he will strengthen thy heart. I say, wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. So praise God. He said, Double taken, amen. Praise the Lord. Wait on the Lord. He said he shall strengthen your heart. In Romans, the Apostle Paul speaking on conducting ourselves to receive something from the Lord. He instructed us to wait with patience. He said whether it's ministry, whatever you're waiting on. Amen. He said wait till that, wait on it. Be patiently, wait for it, for it to come. Because God will hear your cry. He will hear your prayers. 
He will answer in time, but it's His time that He's waiting for you. But waiting seems hard to the natural person. It does seem hard to the natural person. Did you know that whenever Abner killed Ashel, he run, he come back to David, but David sent him to the city of refuge. And so when he went to the city of refuge, Joab and Abishai, they went down and they talked him out of it. Now, there were six cities of refuge where you could stay, where God had prepared for man. If he'd done something unintentional, kill somebody, he'd go there and stay until the priest was dead. And when the priest died, then you were free to go. And the priest was just like, David was like a type of Christ, and so he sent him to the city of refuge. But Abner, they talked him into coming out. Here two men, he had killed their brothers. But that's what's going on in the world today. People could just turn people around. Amen. Could get you into trouble. But you better keep the Word of God. Amen. You better keep the Lord in your life and all that the Lord says. Don't worry about everything else. Amen. Praise God. Stay in the will of the Lord. David Abner should have stayed in the city. Hallelujah. He should, just like us, we should stay in the Word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. But he's waiting on them that are waiting for us. They're wait, they, we're waiting for him. The book of Isaiah, miniature, it's like a miniature Bible. It has 66 books in the Bible, 39 of the Old Testament and 27 of the New. 39 books in Isaiah pertains to the Old Testament, or ver- chapters rather, and 27 to the New for the coming of the Lord. In chapter 30 where I took my text, God, through Isaiah, was warning the people, Woe unto them that go down to Egypt, which is a type of the world. Those that take counsel from the world and not of my spirit, saith the Lord. We don't need to fashion ourselves or need the counsel of the Lord. Of the world, rather. We need to have the counsel of the Lord. We need to fashion ourselves like Christ. But people today, the world, amen, praise the Lord, is what has happened to Israel. Every time they wanted to be like other nations. They didn't want to be what God wanted to be. And God was blessing them. They was the head and not the tail. And God blessing people today, hallelujah. And but yet they're following, they think they've got to follow the fashion and the counsel of the world, hallelujah. But we shouldn't as a church, we don't worry about what's going on out there because our kingdom's not of this world. I cannot. I was listening to Brother Richie Johnson. He said, I'm probably going to get stoned over this. He said, but do you know, we have to buy smoke machines to make smoke. He said, we can't make the smoke ourselves. Just like it was in the temple when Samuel seen he couldn't see the minister. That's what he was talking about. Brother, we should, the church today should be greater than the church in that day. Hallelujah. Amen. We got, oh, how you, we're, we got Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. We got the power and the spirit of God in us. Amen. Praise the Lord. He said, those that have sought strength from Pharaoh. Pharaoh means just a great house. When you're looking for something out there, people get excited over movie stars and politicians and all this stuff, which they call the great house. But I ain't looking for my strength to come from them. I'm looking for my strength to come from the Lord. He said, God said, and they look for that, but they're not of me. They trust in the shadows of Egypt. That's the world. Therefore, the strength of Pharaoh will be your shame. That means you'll be disappointed. And the trust in the shadow of Egypt will be your confusion. That's hurt or disgrace. I always keep in mind the Apostle Paul's writing. He said, all these things happen to them for our examples, and are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world come. Paul said you can look back and look at the old patriarchs and look at them and look at people, how they acted, the kings and what they done. And you can see those that done right before God, God blessed them. God made them the head and not the tail. They was always blessed. But when they turn around and want to be like the other nation, then God would separate himself from them. He said, when you're waiting for me, I'll wait for you. I'll wait till you get turned around. When you get changed, amen, praise the Lord, I'll do something for you. Thank God, praise the Lord. Dwayne waited for the Lord. Now he's going 
going back to work. Hallelujah. Wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Wait, I say. David said, wait up on him. Hallelujah. He's going to take care of us. He always has. The judgment of God and worldly problems. I'd rather learn by, by example than by experience. I don't want to experience these things. And the difference between David and Saul was Saul wouldn't wait. He was supposed to wait for Samuel. But he seen the Philistines gather around and see, he made his own sacrifices. We can't, we got to wait till the Lord does something. There's some things we just can't do. We got to, it takes God to do it, amen. And it's in his time and it's in his presence when he will do it. All these things were example for us. God said, I wait on them that wait on me. The Hebrew word gava, that's what wait means. It, don't, it means to bind together, to expect, to look patiently, to tarry, to wait. It don't just mean to stand still. Amen. But also the Bible is full of that wait and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Right. Be still and know that I am God. Right. And Jesus told him, said, tarry. He said, don't y'all leave Jerusalem. Tarry there. Wait, he said, until the promise of the Father. Wait till you get the power. Wait till I come. I'm going to bind myself together with you. If you'll wait upon the Lord, if you'll pray and seek the Lord, hallelujah, Jesus will bind himself with you, amen. Then the power, we will have the power. If we wait to see what God wants to do in some things, amen, God will answer our prayers and he will do them. But we've got to wait. Wait upon the Lord. Don't forget, amen, not to wait. I said it means to tarry, to expect, to look patiently, to bind together. Jesus was saying, you wait, and I'm going to bind together with you. He said, you go up in that upper room, and it'll be long till you, I'm coming back. Not in the man, not in the flesh, but I'm coming back in the spirit, and then we're going to be bound together. And then when you go back out there, you're going to do things, you're going to do great exploits. Uh, things is going to happen, amen, that you never thought would happen, amen. You're going to be able to take all the things that the world's got to throw out at you. Oh, hallelujah. I don't care what kind of problem's going on, brother, you get bound to Jesus, and you can walk through water, amen, far, Amen. And go through hell and back. But amen, you have to wait on the Lord to do these things. He said, you shall receive power after we're bound together. You know, Job stated, if a man die, will he live again? He said, all the days I will wait for my appointed time till my change comes. And we've read where you've heard of the patience of Job. All these things Job was going to, it make no difference. He said, though he slay me, I'll trust him anyhow and come forth as pure as gold. He said, I mean, God is bound together. He said, I don't care what he does, what God does to me, what he does, how long it takes. I'm going to wait till my change comes. I'm going to wait till I get blessed. And just like the scriptures I read, blessed is the man that wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Your blessings will come. He said, if you wait on me, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm waiting till you begin to wait on me. And when you wait on me, then your cows are going to prosper. Amen. Your fields are going to put forth. All the things that you have is going to begin to plenteous and going to be able to be great. Thank God. Hallelujah. Wait on the Lord. That's the very thing. That was the only word that divided David and Saul. Biggest thing was wait. David always wait on the Lord. David would never go out to battle. He'd inquire of the Lord. Lord, what should I do? The Lord said, wait sometimes. He'd always encourage himself in the Lord. He'd always get an answer from the Lord. And Job was saying, I'm tarrying. I'm looking. Patiently, I'm waiting. I'm expecting, though, too. Though he slay me, I'm going to serve him anyhow. Come forth as pure gold. He's waiting for me, and I'm waiting for him. In the scriptures I read, he said, Though I give you the bread of adversity and the waters of afflictions. God said to us, if something comes, if he has to chastise us for something, 
whatever's going on in our lives. Don't get upset about it. Don't get upset. I, I'm, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting till you get yourself right. And when you get yourself in the right way, hallelujah, amen, then I'm coming down, hallelujah, amen, and I'm going to change things, hallelujah. Your things are going to be blessed, hallelujah, because blessed is a man that wait upon the Lord. I'm going to bring forth blessings if you begin to do it, amen. He said, thine ears, when you get to turn around, he said, and when you get, even though I have to put afflictions upon you, and adversity comes, he said, then you're going to hear something behind you. You're going to hear a voice. Whoo, it's going to tell you. It's going to let you know the way to go. Ain't you glad? Hallelujah. We got a God. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, praise God. We don't have a road map. We got a private God. Hallelujah. We got God. He said that the Holy Ghost will lead and guide you into all truth. Amen. We don't have to have a map. We got a personal God. Hallelujah. That takes us through all the troubles that we're going through. What we have to do. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thine ears, saying, this is the way, walk you in it. And he said, when you turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left, there shall be blessings on every side. Wherever, it don't make, you look over here, that used to be a dry spot. And over there, I ain't going over there because I couldn't be blessed over there. But he said, don't make no difference which way. On the right hand and the left hand. You're going to be blessed here. You're going to be blessed there. You're going to be blessed going in and blessed coming out. Oh, thank God. If you just wait upon the Lord and let him renew your strength. Thank God. David said, wait upon the Lord. And he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. Blessed are they that wait on the Lord. Blessed, we all know, means to be happy, but it means more here. It comes from the word Asher. It's happy, be level, be right, to go forward, to prosper, guide, relieve. You all remember Leah and Rachel. Leah was having children, and man, she said, everybody's going to call me blessed. And everything, and poor old Rachel, she was the one, amen, Hallelujah, that Jacob loved the most. But praise the Lord, she couldn't have any child. She had a shame, a reproach upon her. But she kept waiting, and she kept praying, and she kept seeking the Lord, hallelujah, and waiting on the Lord because she knew that if her womb got opened, it wasn't going to be man that done it. It was going to be God. And I want to tell you something. If you get blessed out there, it's not going to be the world that blesses you, hallelujah. It's not going to be a doctors that bless you. It's going to be God that blesses you, hallelujah. Whatever goes on, it takes God to to heal. It takes God to deliver. It takes God to save. Only He can do it. Hallelujah. But He's waiting on us to wait on Him. And Rachel, she finally, the Bible said she conceived. Brought forth a child. They called his name Joseph. And said, now God has taken away my reproach. I don't care what kind of trouble you're going through out there. You might be filled down and empty. Maybe you're feeling like God has given you the bread of adversity and the waters of affliction. But he does that to open you up, to let you know that, and it looks like you can't get help from nowhere. And that's the only way God can deal with you. When you know you've got to turn to the Lord. And God was telling Israel in these scriptures I read, you won't do this and you won't do that. And I'm going to turn you loose. But there's going to be a time you're going to be a set up, you're going to flee to up on a mountain. But it's going to be an ensign up there. It's going to be a sign. Hallelujah. Amen. It's going to be a sign to me. Hallelujah. That it's time for me to open up. Hallelujah. It's time for me. Hallelujah. To remember you. Just like he said. Amen. God remembered Noah. Amen. He remembered Rachel. Oh, thank God. Hallelujah. He'll remember you. Amen. He, will, he won't leave you alone. Hallelujah. He will not leave you nor forsake you. He'll go with you all the way even unto the end of the world. He'll go with you. You know, I was thinking about Isaiah 80, 
He said, just put it all behind you. Wait on the Lord. He said, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. In Jerusalem, there was a pool called Bethesda, which means a house of mercy. And every time at a pointed time, an angel would come down and trouble the water. And Jesus came by, and they said, There's many impotent, sick, lame people there. And Jesus came by. He saw this one man been laying there for 38 years. And Jesus looked down at him and said, Jesus knew it. He'd been there for a long time. He'd already knew what was going on. Right. But he knew that man was expecting something. He knew that he had hope. Thank God for hope. Amen. Paul said, by hope you are saved. But hope that is seen is not hope. Or else why do you wish for it? But whatever you do hope for, he said, then wait patiently. Wait patiently, hallelujah. And that hope will come. Whatever it is, hallelujah, it will come to you. If you'll just wait, wait upon the Lord, be patient and wait on him. But people won't wait. But that man was laying there and he knew that was the only place to get healing. He didn't know Jesus. He didn't know anything about Jesus. But Jesus come along. <laughs> Ooh, glory. <laughs> Ain't you glad Jesus come along in your life? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ain't you glad, hallelujah, Jesus come along in your life? <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And Jesus said, Wilt thou be made whole? He said, but sir, I have no man to help me. He said, when the angel comes down and troubles the water, and while I'm making my way there, somebody else steps inside of me. Well, Jesus said, you don't need to pool today. <laughs> you don't need to pool today. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. You don't need no pool. Hallelujah. He said, take up your bed and walk. Hallelujah. We don't need no doctors. We don't need no lawyers. If we just wait on the Lord, if we wait on Him, He's waiting on us to wait on Him. Hallelujah. Well, I thank God. Hallelujah. For the mercy and the grace of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Kabashanabohotahaya. Thank you, Jesus. I praise God. Wait upon the Lord, and he will renew your strength. Hallelujah. The mount up today. Take up your bed and walk. Otherwise, you don't need no more pools. You found something better than the pool. We found something better than doctors. We found something better than locked. Lawyers. Now, like I said, God is a lot about waiting. Be still and know that I am God. Amen. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And I said, as God remembered Noah, and God remembered Rachel, God will remember you. He knows, just like the man at the pool. Amen. He knew he'd been there for a long time. Right. He knows what you've been going through. But he wants to do like Israel. He said, I want to bless you. Blessed is the man that wait upon the Lord. But you're going to have to wait. Wait, I say. The scripture says. You know, he said, Paul said, if we wait patiently on that hope, he said, likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. He said, anything that's going wrong in your life, if you wait patiently, it will happen. Amen. I'm going to show you how great Jesus is. I want to go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter, verse <clears throat> chapter 3, verse 18. For Christ also has once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, 
being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Come on. Come on. Whew, glory. Right. Which sometimes were disobedient when the long suffering of God waiting in the days of Noah. While the ark was preparing where few, few, that is eight souls, were saved. The like figure which unto even baptism doth also now save us, not to putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Christ, of Jesus Christ. For 2,000 years, these souls have been waiting Even though there's in a city of refuge, the priest, the high priest had to die. The high priest had to die before, hallelujah, they could get released. The high priest had to, oh, hallelujah, Jesus had to come. Jesus had to die, hallelujah. Amen, praise the Lord. And then after 2,000 years of waiting, the master showed up. He, I, glory, hallelujah. Oh, after 2,000 years, he showed up, hallelujah. My God, my God. Hallelujah. He'll show up if you wait on him. He'll show up. And you think we got it bad. He said it's going to take 2,000 more years for you to, for promise to come. Hallelujah. But he told us just get down and wait until you get filled with the Holy Ghost and the power. We're going to bind together. You wait on me. Be expecting me. Be looking for me. Oh, glory, things are going to happen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 2,000 years waiting. You know, Moab had come, rebelled against Israel after Ahab died. Azariah, am I getting along, Wendy? Azariah, had fell through the lattice. And so he sent his messenger to Beelzebub, to the god of Ekron. Said, go inquire and see if I'm going to recover from my disease. Elijah the Tishabite, they said, found, caught the messenger going along the way. And Elijah said to the messenger, where are you going? And he told him the story. He said, is there not a God of Israel? <laughs> you go back and tell that Azariah, because he is sent to acquire for a false god, hallelujah, he's not going to get out of his bed. He's going to die, hallelujah. If he ain't waiting on the Lord, hallelujah, he's gone, praise the Lord. He sent many more messengers three times. Fifty men at a time. And I, said, I mean, Elijah looked at him and said, if I ain't a man of God, far come down from him and burn you up. <laughs> He'd come down and burn him up. Took him up. He said, because you went and followed or trying to get to the God of Ekron. He said, God finally sent him to him. And he said, listen, you're sure not, gonna, you're not going to recover. You're going to die in your bed. Asa, all these things is what I'm trying to say has happened to them. For us to let us know, don't put your hopes in a doctor. Every one of us goes to a doctor sometimes. But God knows my hope is in him. Hallelujah, amen. There are things, hallelujah. I know if God don't protect you, hallelujah, you ain't going to come back. If you're going there and trusting a doctor to do it, you probably won't come home. Asa was king of Israel. He took all the gold and the silver out of the house of God and gave it to Benadad, king of Syria. He said, we want to make a league together. We want to be like the world and the church is solely gone. We want to, do, we want to be a league. And the prophet looked at him and said, Asa, 
Did you not know that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth to find someone to show himself strong in? God was wanting to do something great with you. When we just at the time, if we just wait on the Lord, you should have, he said, just wait a little longer, hallelujah. God was waiting to show something to you, hallelujah. You need to wait. I don't care how bad you feel. Keep on waiting until God comes, hallelujah. Now you've sought Syria. Help from Syria. Asa was diseased in his feet, the Bible said, greatly diseased. And he sought the physicians, and he died. Wasn't no help for him, because he sought for the physicians. David said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me, and I heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the mire clay. He put a new song in my mouth, even praises unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and trust the Lord. You know, there was a man that fits this. Simeon, the Bible said he was a devout man, a just man. And he was waiting on the consolation of Israel, waiting for the Lord's Christ to come. And he stayed there and waited and waited, knowingly, Expect, right, looking, right. but waiting. And finally one day, here they come carrying him right. <laughs> into the church. Amen. He looked up on him. He said, you shall be the rise and the fall of many nations. Mm. But he said, my eyes have seen. Now I've seen my hope has come true. I hope I don't have to wait no more. I know there's a deliverer for Israel. I know there's a deliverer for me. I know, hallelujah. Amen, it don't bother me no more. He said, now let your servant depart in peace. I have seen the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's time we wait until we see the salvation of the Lord working on us. Hallelujah. It takes Jesus to do these things. Hallelujah. We can't do them. There's things too big big for us, but they're not too big for God. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. When he bonds together with you, when you get the Holy Ghost, then Christ in you the hope of glory. I'm getting ready to close here. I want the church just to think about this. I know God has done a lot for our church. He sure has. We've never had no financial worries. Never. No cancer in the church. Keeping our dedicated children safe and protected. I just had the pleasure of dedicating my great-grandson a while ago. Great-grandson, one. Keeping all those that get to travel in power safe. More things he's done for us than we'll ever know. We don't even know about. But I want you to think on this, church. While you're off and got time, think about Elijah and Elisha. Elisha, I mean Elijah, if you look in things, I mean one time he's hid out in a cave. He got afraid. But Elisha, and Elijah was heralded as the greatest prophet and, and always will be in Israel. But Elisha, he said, I, I just want, don't want that spirit. I want a double portion of that spirit. I want, you know the apostles will always be hurled as the greatest ch- in the church, hallelujah. But I want to tell you something. We ought to be said, we don't want just their spirit. We want a double portion of their spirit, hallelujah. We want to church, be a church that has a double portion of what Paul and James and John and all of them had. Yes, praise God. But we shouldn't be satisfied with just the spirit of the apostles. We should be looking for a double portion. Do you know, just like I said, 
Luke had wrote the book of Luke. He wrote it to Theophilus. And then he began to write the book of Acts. And he said, O Theophilus, I thought it needful that I write to you. He said, of the former treaties. How that Jesus told us, don't leave. Stay here. Wait. Wait for the promise. Wait for the promise. Get in that room. Get up there expecting something. Get up there looking for something. Hallelujah. You won't need no smoke machine to make smoke. Hallelujah. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is going to come down. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's not going to be just for you. They're going to hear it throughout the city. Hallelujah. Amen. There are going to be people hollering out, what must we do to be saved? Hallelujah. 3,000 souls added that day to the church. Hallelujah. Because they waited on the Lord. And Jesus come down. And he bound with them in the spirit hallelujah and authority came you know I love y'all because God said listen the Egyptians are men they ain't nothing no more the world they're just men out there and not God their horses are flesh and not spirit why are you looking to the world? Why do we look to the world and or try to be fashioned like the world? I don't understand it. But God said, listen, if you wait on me, you're going to hear a voice. There will be a voice come. You're going to hear it. And it's going to tell you the right way. The right way to walk. And he said, when you look to the left, <laughs> there's going to be blessings. And when you look to the left, right, there are going to be blessings. There are going to be blessings, overly blessings. So he's waiting on you to wait for him. I appreciate y'all. I God bless you. And I love y'all. And like I said, if you ever need anything, if we the church can help do anything, I know Thomas... Brother Dwayne, me, JB, Johnny Lee, more than willing to help. I thank God for Brother Dwayne and Clarence, um, Brother Junior going down and getting Clarence's tractor started for it. So, you know, just things like that makes a whole lot of difference, you know. I mean, it does. It, that's, that's brotherly love. That's doing things. Amen. Praise the Lord. But, I, so I think about so many things I can say to my congregation while I'm at home sitting, thinking, and doing everything. But all I can tell you is be safe, be saved. Right. Stay safe, stay saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Father, yes, Lord. we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for thy mercy and thy grace, God. Lord, I praise you, God. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Lord, just keep everybody, God. Hallelujah. Let the Spirit of the Lord come down, God. We thank you, God, for all the things you've done for us, God. For all the blessings, Lord, you poured out upon us, God. For your Spirit, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. Lord, we want to walk with your Spirit. We want to walk by faith, God, not by sight. God, if we start walking by sight, we'll fail, God. We'll stumble. We'll fall. But God, when we walk with faith, hallelujah, we will not stumble. Hallelujah. We appreciate you, God. God bless our congregation. Bless every congregation, God. Bless every minister. Everyone is trying to preach and do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, yay and amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus.